come a long way. Like I said, it may be a small community, but everyone stands behind each other. He immediately challenged staff and students to get involved by well, that, that, that was the first time I felt it was very important to succeed in this one. Because if we don't, we are not succeed in, 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 in anything else in the community. educated a lot of our people and skills. It is officially open. Yes. Greetings, visitors, friends, tourists. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Opaska Cree Nation. My name is Chief Michael G. Constant. We, uh, I'd like to welcome you into our traditional territory as we, uh, as we, as Opaska Cree Nation, have a lot to offer. As we, as you come into our community, I know it's uh, it's always welcoming to have not only new employees, but tourists and friends and family to come back to say hi to new and old friends and build that relationship and maintain that relationship that you've, that you've built and want to build into the future because Opaska Cree Nation has come a long way in the last 50 years of, uh, in success because the time of, the, the time of uh, we, when we were called the, the Paw Indian Band to Opaska Cree Nation, we were one of the most successful First Nations in Manitoba and let alone Canada. During the winter, we went for a, a camp yeah, for trapping out about 20 miles out for Solid Channel, and we stayed there most of the winter. That was before I went to school. Eh? Uh, so when I went to school, I, uh, I walked from Car River to where the uh, Kelvin is right now. Uh, Sam Water was a teacher at that time. Yeah. So that's, I, wasn't, I wasn't very old, I maybe five or six. I went to school there for.
our teachers were our families, yeah? our aunties, our uncles, our grandfathers, our grandmothers. And when you take children away from families, you know, they, lose, they begin to lose their language, they begin to lose their, their values, they begin to lose their beliefs that they're, that they're supposed to be taught. So they go out to another different environment and, and they learn and they follow these other things yeah, that are going on with it, but that's not really what they were if they were living in their family, that's what, what they were supposed to be taught, to, how, to, how to live and uh, how to survive. Eh? You don't take care of your spirit in the other bands, you don't take care of your body, your, your emotions, and all, all those things. Eh? You, know, you want to take care of it. Alaska Cree Nation has come a long way in terms of uh, business and human resources in developing our community because business works with human resources hand in hand. The chief of the day, our past chief, late Gordon Lathlin, and the chiefs before him had set out a vision for our community in developing our community to help other community and the elders of the time. Gordon Lafton, our late chief, had a vision for a plan for a community to develop in the, past, in the next 40 years of where he wanted to see. as a nation to support that vision for our people and our generations to come. So now in the, in the new era, as the leader of today, <clears throat> there's a new sector that's come along within our natural resources, the mining sector. We've, uh, we're developing it along with the council, along with the management team for the future, for jobs, Revenue sharing.
going to move, uh, you know, uh, uh, the agencies and organizations together and deal with the issues of suicide and all the social issues that come with that, which were many. <clears throat> and it was important for us to to have a, a good grasp of uh, what what leads people to start considering suicide. Okay? It was mostly young people. Uh, young adults, some uh, unfortunately uh, middle age as well, uh, that, that uh, were thinking about this and, and actually completed uh, suicides. So we went to the province at uh, that time, according to uh, you know to provide some resources, not not much, but enough enough to help the uh, the group uh, to do the work they needed to do. It's a pain, a different story All this anger It keeps me smothered I'm still living in this painful Responded to many calls We intervened We, we uh, channeled the people to the proper uh, uh, programs and agencies and services where they could get help and we help the, uh, the the family members, uh, parents, or, uh, or grandparents, or uh, uh, people that uh, that were uh, foster parents and, and that. We, so we help them deal deal with that and how to provide that aftercare at home, at home because eventually those you know the people go home, eh? So that, that, that's what that was the first challenge. I felt it was very important to succeed in this one because if we don't, we're not going to succeed in, 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 in anything else. Ocean Natural Resources is a department that looks after um, the, like the wildlife, the, the waters off reserve land kind of protect the interests of Ocean Band members, such as wildlife, waterways, traditional land use, like the traditional medicines, uh, access routes, the animals, the monitoring. There's a vast area of minerals, uh, who gets to have what, uh, planning, forestry, everything. So it's a big, it's a big, um, it's a big department to look after. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the manpower to maintain that. It is very important for OCN to try and establish our own fundamental laws, guidelines, to tell the province how we want to do business within our own traditional territory, uh, to be recognized, to say, hey, you know what, this is our territory. We want to manage the way we want to manage. At the same time, we're able to say no to mining companies, able to say no to any kind of forestry activities. At least we have that opportunity to say that. The blizzard were uh, formed, uh, number one, to, uh, I guess, fill some of the voids that uh, you feel in the northern community uh, because uh, there's no uh, action or no activity. So hockey has always been uh, a major um, uh, winter activity here at OCN with the uh, teams that we had in the past, the Paul Blues, and uh, to name one of the teams that uh, did well. The other teams that uh, also, the minor hockey and everything you also we decided that uh, to fill in the void of winter by bringing in a uh, good quality uh, 
team uh, to uh, entertain the community. But as it turned out, the team played a major factor in the, uh, the healing, I, I will call it, of the relationships between the town of the Paw and the Opaska Cree Nation. And the, the team uh, helped forge a better relationship with the town of the Paw. Uh, the bridge uh, that uh, divided us now acted as a vehicle for uh, bringing in uh, members from the Paw to our community to uh, let them see you know what we could put together and so we had the support from the town we had the support from all the locals in the vicinity and uh, that was very important to us that that aspect of uh, the forming the blizzard and furthermore i think the uh, the ability of the team to draw from uh, not only from uh, local uh, resources in terms of uh, community but also it has a far-reaching impact into our other first nation communities not only uh, within the area but as far away as uh, Saskatchewan and uh, northern Saskatchewan and uh, into northern Manitoba. We have a big following of uh, First Nations fans and I think we act as a, even though there are other First Nation teams, I think the Blizzard is looked upon as something who is leading the charge and taking charge and taking control and being the uh, showcase for native talent, native hockey. Today, I had the chance to see this uh, health center along its different uh, 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 different stages, and uh, and really to see a, a vision in action. I want to acknowledge the work of uh, Chief Constant and, and uh, uh, former chiefs, uh, uh, Chief uh, Rawl, uh, the work of councillors who were all part of, uh, of making sure that uh, when, when OCN talked about health, it was talking about integrated services, it was talking about uh, a holistic approach to health. And I think today is a day where, where uh, you ought to be proud not just of this health centre, but of, uh, of really a, a model that you've built for so many communities across the north and not just First Nations but Métis communities and, and our mixed communities across the north that need to learn from what you've done here recognizing that improving health uh, and, and certainly uh, improving the results in terms of uh, uh, healthy living means committing to a holistic approach to health. grocery store, we had, uh, I think we had Timberland Trailer Court, and, uh, and maybe s gravel operations they used to call them, eh? Business, and yet the, the chief of the day, I forget who it was, maybe it might have been Oscar, might have been Ch Chief Charlie Constant, but what they wanted to do was they wanted to bring it all together, and they wanted to reorganize our economic development, put Put everything under one uh, roof where we could uh, manage all the managers and do all the accounting and you know start start to the point get to the point where we could help OCN by flowing the money for you know to help out in different areas like garbage removal policing you know the roads they do the I, th I think they still do the roads through the gas station and Back in the in the in the seventies, eighties, that was the one thing that uh, that took the that was front and center. Eh? Everybody wanted economic development. Everybody wanted jobs for our youth, for our young people, and for families. And uh, everybody wanted our families to become more independent and to grow. And to, uh, so we really poured a lot uh, in, in from for you know into economic development uh, during those years. Eh? And, and, and uh, it, 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 was the, it was the biggest, one of the biggest factors for us growing. You know, you know people always ask, you know, treaties, uh, you know, um, 
regular Canadians that don't have a clue about First Nations always say, how come you get everything for free? You know, we, we, we're the poorest people around. How can we get everything for free? We got nothing. Um, all our resources we've given up so that they can, you know, they can pay taxes, they can work, they can get everything that benefits from the money generation of those activities. And, and we've given all of that up. So, we, you know, we're basically starting from scratch. The Indigenous Invitational Games came about because the the cancellation of the North American Indigenous Games. We wanted to continue uh, developing of our uh, athletes. Uh, uh, the planning started the year before the uh, before the games were actually uh, set to go. And we planned everything: the events, the entertainment. The, the safety of the athletes I was taken into consideration. We want to continue this event every uh, the year before the uh, the North American Indigenous Games, so so our athletes are not training for for four years or three years to get to the to be get to the North American Indigenous Games. So they have an outlet to measure their where they're at with their, uh, with their development. Last year's first six years it ran, so you can you can tell it started back in the 60s and 60s. And I believe the um, there's a different chairman. Um, I, I believe they added added a little bit of everything to each event, and and slowly from there it expanded. And the expanded event was uh, I guess more to accommodate uh, the uh, growing population of the Pacific Cree Nation. And like I said, every every uh, ever so often, uh, different uh, chairman is inducted, and um, the person who inducted uh, some of the some of the events uh, they, uh, they change it. Uh, there's very various uh, chairman. I believe each one of them added a special a special um, event into the uh, into their uh, succession. But um, it, yeah, it's been going on for four to six years now. You just have to believe in it, and then you find other people that believe in it. It's like you track positive with positive. I mean, you know, they, you know, the secret, you know, whatever you know, that's how you do it. It really is. You track positive with positive, and like-minded people to share the same vision, and they can get it. Uh, you you chase it together. You really, well, what we, what, what, what our, our vision, our mission statement, who we are, what do we want to do? Uh, basically, uh, we had people from the town side, and in and, and a couple of past years, it hasn't been, it worked the way we sh we uh, would have liked it to be. Uh, we, it was dubbed the Festival of Unity. We wanted uh, the youth from the PA side, the Arm Kelsey, uh, Paspiak, OCN here, you know, like joining the youth coming together, you know, and building those relationships and linkages. That that that's the the main thing. And, and but uh, other than that, I'm thinking like. The new format that's what we got to do for next year is like they could just workshops one day and then all day 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock you know like that like like a real like, you know, the festivals that they have sometimes like so and, and it'll cut down on costs um or i don't know we're, just, we're still working on it or we have to figure it out as soon as i get a group of people that are willing to work together we'll figure it out together it's not my say it's not anybody's say it's a collective group saying this is what we want to do we vote on it you know that's how you do it you know it's like
From, from elders. Uh, this is a picture of uh, me and my son. He's going for his uh, first hospital visit in Winnipeg. And we're playing uh, Nintendo Wii. Thanks for having me. I hope you guys have 